had there not been Barbara Walters, surely all of the other women who have followed in her footsteps, including myself, could not stand where we stand and do what we do in this industry today. Anybody who knows me knows the story of how I started out in television trying to be like Barbara. Walk like Barbara, talk like Barbara, sit like Barbara. I soon found that only Barbara could be like Barbara. This living legend paved the way for us with such grace and with such courage that it makes me proud to spell my name woman. As the first woman co-anchor and anchor of any news broadcast, Barbara Walters has paved the way for women television journalists. By far one of the world's most famous interviewers, she sacrificed having a successful personal life and had to deal with the negative feedback from those surrounding her. On September 25, 1929, Barbara Walters was born. She was the second daughter to Lou and Dina Walters, whose first child, Jackie, was considered mentally challenged. All throughout her childhood, Barbara had always felt like she had been cast aside because her parents' main focus was Jackie. Her father, Lou, owned a chain of nightclubs called the Latin Quarter. The inconsistent flow of money from the nightclub resulted in Lou to fall in and out of his fortune. Often bankrupt, he moved the family around constantly. Barbara found it hard to focus in school, continuously trying to fit in, and she didn't speak to many friends outside of school. Her elementary and secondary teachers would say that she was a quiet girl and she didn't seem particularly intelligent. Things seemed to change once Barbara started college at Sarah Lawrence, an all-girls college in Bronxville, New York. It seems instantly she became more social and started taking time to shop for the most chic clothing and was always up to date with her style. She became an active member in the school newspaper and her grades improved. She graduated in 1951 with a bachelor's degree in English. For a little while after graduating, Barbara wasn't sure what she wanted to do. She went to her father Lou for advice on what her next step should be to start a career. Lou offered to speak to some of his friends he had known from his clubs and see what he could do. Lou found her a job with Tex McGrary Inc. as a publicist, a job that did not last long at all. Soon after, Barbara landed a job at CBS News as a writer, where she also did not last long. In 1961, Barbara joined NBC to work for the Today Show as a researcher and writer, where she would remain for 15 years. This job would be the most important, jump-starting her career and her start in television. Barbara's co-workers, especially Gail Rock, remembers her working hard and always doing her homework. She would read as many books as possible in the shortest amount of time in order to speak intelligently on camera. Barbara wrote segments that the anchors of the Today Show would broadcast. Less than a year after joining the Today Show, Barbara was promoted as the Today Girl. She would do the little, less important segments on the show and even sometimes the weather. Topics such as politics and war remained discussed by the male anchors. Proving herself to be a serious reporter, Barbara was allowed to do feature segments covering hard news stories. When she was sent to cover Richard Nixon's trip to the People's Republic of China in 1972, she amazed the producers of today and started to do more and more serious coverage stories like this one. She was a reporter at large, developing, writing, and editing her own reports and interviews. It wasn't until 1974 that Barbara Walters was made an official co-host of The Today Show. In 1976, Barbara made a jump from NBC to ABC for a record-breaking seven-figure salary. Barbara Walters became the first woman in television to get the equal pay of a man. At ABC, she became the first woman co-anchor of any news program. Also, this is when the famous Barbara Walters specials would begin airing, with four specials a year. Her time on ABC Evening News only lasted two years, ending in 1978 due to the tension between her and co-anchor Harry Wiesner. The on-air tension resulted in a decreased number of viewers. She then made a switch to ABC's news program 2020 in 1979 where she remained until semi-retiring from television journalism in 2004. In August of 1997, The View, a daytime women's talk show, premiered with Barbara Walters as co-creator, co-producer, and co-host. She is still co-host today. The air shows Monday through Friday on the ABC network. In 2008, Barbara Walters published her autobiography titled Audition, a memoir, that became a bestseller in the first two weeks of selling. It was the first title I thought of, and I still think it's the best title. I feel that I have been auditioning all my life, certainly all my professional life. 
In the book, she admits that her father, Lou, was the reason she had had so much drive to be so successful. Watching him fall in and out of his fortune, Barbara knew that one day she would have to take care of her parents and her sister, Jackie. She didn't want to struggle the way he had. Barbara Walters is the most famous for her interviews. Her interview with Monica Lewinsky attracted the attention of over 74 million viewers, more than any other interview had before. She has sat down with every president since Richard Nixon. Some of her most famous interviews have been the ones with Fidel Castro, Patrick Swayze, Barack Obama, and of course, Monica Lewinsky. Every president, world leader, and celebrity trusts Barbara. She has a way of pulling the truth from them. She once said, I find often people like to confront rumors. It depends on how much they trust you, and you have to have a fine line between what is tasteful and what isn't. These interviews have had such influence over the people of the United States, and have been a way for some celebrities and leaders to clear up their names, rumors, and any misconceptions that people may have about them. I often hear, and it pleases me, that I was a trailblazer for women. But I wasn't waving the flag. I, I didn't set out to change things and move things along. It was just that there were so many hurdles. I had to work. I had to support myself. At one point, I had to support my family. So I just took what the situation was and made the best of it. Sometimes it was very difficult. Certainly, every woman broadcast journalist can thank Barbara Walters for paving the way. One of the most popular women in television today, Oprah Winfrey admits that she tried to be just like Barbara when she was starting out in television because she was such an idol to her. Many are inspired by the way Barbara embraced the negative feedback in a male-dominated area and used it to better herself. Thanks to Barbara Walters' contributions to television journalism, constraints are no longer put on women in television, and no longer is the area dominated by men. A lot of young people come up to me and say, I would like to have a life like yours. And I answer, then you must take the whole package.